Yeah guys, Chris here at CaribbeanPod.com. We're out in Stratford, Ontario today. Um, back there we just saw that's Roger Mookin. We're going to be doing a quick little interview with him, share some questions we had on Facebook. I hope I can remember all the questions. Get to them if I can. So next up we will meet Roger. Yeah, my Caribbean pot that come people. Look who we have with us today. Okay. Roger Mookin, the man himself. Roger. Yeah. We're out here in Stratford, Ontario. I got maybe about three or four questions with you. Yeah. Questions which I told people I was gonna come out here and they wanted me to ask you these questions. Oh, that's good. But before we get to the questions, we have a food blogger out of St. Croix, US Virgin Islands. Okay. Her name is Crucian Contessa and she wanted me yeah. To one, ask you a question, and two, invite you to come down to St. Croix, the U.S. Virgin Islands. I'm hoping maybe she might organize a hotel and something for you. I don't know, man, but I just had to say that. You the talk question. to her right there. She's the one. We need two tickets. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can feel the energy from the man, eh? <laughs> the question was, what one spice you always reach for, and what it is about a spice that you like? One thing I find I use commonly is coriander, brown coriander or whole coriander seeds, dried. Mm -hmm. I use that a lot, man, even in different ratios, sometimes a little bit, sometimes a lot. But even as if I use it a little bit in a support flavor role, it adds a lot of warmth and depth. And if I'm using it heavily, it adds a lot of vibrant flavor and a very simple pack of punch, you know? Beautiful. So I fall on that a lot, yeah. Nice. If you were a roti. <laughs> right? So we have sada roti, bus up shot, yeah. dal puri. What roti would you be? Bus up shot. Oh gosh. Because it's kind of a little bit rough, but soft, you know, on the inside. It's soft. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me, guys. Um, roti or bacon shark? Oh no, sorry. Doubles or bacon shark? Bacon shark. Bacon what you're going to put on a bacon shark? Okay, see, this is a good question, you know. I'll get a couple different bacon shack mm -mm. and I dress them up a, a little bit different. You know, I go by the man who has the long table. You know that that one? Richards. Richards. Yeah. Long table with like a hundred things on it. So definitely you have to put some tamron on it. Mm -hmm. He put some shadow benny on it, right? That's the coriander that you like? Coriander that it's I like. It's a similar yeah. flavor. Similar, similar, yeah. Some shadow benny. I put a little bit of um, bird pepper, mm -hmm. right? So that's one. That's one there on the side. The other one, I put some, you know, I like to chop some onions and a little, little bit of tomato and thing like that. Nice. Like that. And a little, again, some of just pepper sauce. You know? Boss, you're getting me hungry, yes? Let me, move, <laughs> let, me, let me move from that one there. We've been noticing in the Caribbean, and it's a trend where we're finding that the kids of Caribbean heritage, they tend to, to be ashamed, not really ashamed, but they're not as proud of their food as they should be. Mm. I don't know if you've come across. It's a discussion we've been having online for a little while now. Really? How do we get kids more involved? Like, is it more in the kitchen, educating them about the food to be proud of it? Or what, what is your take on getting kids to not only enjoy their own food, but be proud of their food? That's interesting. You know, I haven't had that experience. Um, you, you're getting that a lot, yeah? In, in, in my personal case, yeah. for instance, we dropped off our daughter down at, in uh, London, Ontario for school. Yep. My mom cooked up some curry shrimp for her grandma. I have to have curry shrimp. Yeah. So I'm thinking, obviously, the next best thing is roti. You want some roti to take with us? Oh, no, no, no. I'm just going to eat it on the side. Okay. She goes down there. She hooks up with a couple Jamaican friends and stuff like that. Bring, bring, dad. I need roti now for the thing. <laughs> So I'm thinking, I, I'm, I notice when their friends come over and stuff like that, they won't pull out that stewed chicken and rice. They yeah, will ask yeah. for pizza because their friends are more into the pizza and all that. So, right, right, right. I don't know, man. It, it, it's, it's, it, it seems to be that we're not making them as proud as they can be of the foods that's traditional to them. Well, I think it's just exposure, too, you know. I don't know. I'm, you know, you seem like you cook that around the house and yeah. you should be familiar with it, right? Mm -hmm. Um I don't know, man. It hasn't entirely been my experience sometimes my kids are picky with okay that. so g going back we're in calgary you, you, you grew up in calgary I grew up correct? in edmonton in edmonton even let me call that far out there <coughs> right far out there, yeah. would you have taken let me say uh a typical caribbean dish for lunch in school or was it your, your ham and cheese easy. really yeah 
Yeah, no, for sure. I was always, I love that food, man. Beautiful, Got beautiful. Shave and... um, I'm, still, I'm just going through my questions, and I think I have one more question for you. One Caribbean dish. Forget Trinidad, forget Tobago, right? One Caribbean dish beat from Jamaica, Barbados, St. Lucia, wherever it is. What one dish would you recommend someone who's never had Caribbean food try? Don't, don't hit me no jerk chicken, please, because that is too common. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 it's a good question. Um, there's a man named Screechy mm -hmm. in Jamaica. Okay. And he makes a fry fish. And he'll go catch the fish. Uh -huh. Rainbow, snapper, red snapper, different fish. And he will cook up that thing, man, fry the fish. And then you finish it with plenty allspice, onion, vinegar, and you cook like that up. Like an escovitch almost. Yeah, escovitch. And, and scotch bonnet. Throw it on top like that. Esco oh, I know I said man. one question, but you touched on scotch bonnet pepper Ooh, there. Ooh, that's good. That man could cook a good. You went to screechy. Eh? Screechy. You went all over America eating the people's spicy hot food. You and your partner, for the yeah. Mexican partner. Aaron Sanchez. Yeah. Right? What's up, Aaron Sanchez? There we go. Uh, you got to tune in there, partner. Um, <laughs> one pepper you think you're just in love with. It could be a Mexican pepper, a Caribbean pepper. What one pepper you, you, you really connected with? And two, after eating all those hot food, any problems after? <laughs> um, I really like the Thai chili. Mm. The little vibrant little red and they come green like that too. Those ones are nice. They have a nice bright big flavor and they have a respectable amount of heat, but not too too hot for me for me, you know what I mean? Um, I really like the balance of a, a Thai pepper. And, you know you can cook it up in something like how I cook it today. Yeah. Or you can just have it and bite it and eat what you you know, like that kind of way too. I love the versatility of it. And you could eat a whole one, you know, like that, right? Yeah. So that's a good one. I like that one. Excellent. Problems? Excellent. Problems. <laughs> well, I've seen some of the stuff you guys eat, and I mean, I say you can call them things nuclear. It's so dangerous. Some of know? them are just, you know, I can't go back. You can't go well, back. on behalf of everyone at CaribbeanPod.com, the entire Caribbean community, community, the entire Canadian community, mm -hmm. keep doing your thing, and thanks a lot for spending some time with us today. Thank you, man. I appreciate it.